What time is it? It's eight o'clock. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day edition. I just got my hair did, so I felt the need to uh, make a little video. We're gonna do really loose, simplified four leaf clovers because why not? You'll think that that's kind of like a basic thing to do that everyone will be able to figure out, but I just wanna show you the way I do things. I'm gonna be using Lucky by Art Philosophy. Don't forget, you can always get any Art Philosophy products on their website. If you use the discount code, it's Art Clock 15%, you should get 15% off your entire order. I'll leave a little linky thing below. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it, and I'm gonna show you how I like to do it, and I like to use a lot of water, and you'll see that a lot in my work moving forward. Um, and if you've been on my page before, you'll know that that is like a typical move of mine. And yeah, we're just gonna have some fun. All right, so let's get into it. First of all, look what I just found. The cutest little washi tape that I didn't even know I had. <laughs> but it's perfect. So I like to use washi tape um, with my watercolour paper. This is a £140 watercolour paper. It's actually by Strathmore, this one. Um, I just like to have pre-cut sheets sometimes to play with. You could do this in a sketchbook. Or if you're going to like make a card for people, you could do that. I always like to use washi tape over, say like a masking tape because I find it to be a little bit less sticky so it doesn't rip the page um, but it still is sticky enough that it will leave a nice crisp line so that's why I use washi tape and there's lots of brands out there you don't have to get it based off the look of the tape I tend to just because I'm a sucker for a cute pattern um, and just so you know I always recycle so I'll use this tape that I peel off if it's not too heavily destroyed I'll use it in like my um like junk journaling or mixed media pieces. And so I'm actually using this as a way of making a nice, neat white border, because that will remain. Um, and I then kind of double, double tape, just to make sure it doesn't peel off. Because like I said, it's not as sticky as, um, you know, like a masking tape or an artist tape. Um, but it's super cute. <laughs> That's why I love it. And how perfect is that for today? Totally not planned but i got it to work okay so color wise i won't show you guys this this is by artistic isle actually um and i bought this years ago this is the forest green but it came in a cute little clover so it's like couldn't be more perfect i got me some water nice clean dirty jar but clean water <laughs> and then these are the paints i've got tree sea green that lucky paint i was mentioning these are by art philosophy these are the concentrated watercolors um i'm gonna grab one other color actually moss so it's all the different green shades. And then I've got this metallic artistic aisle. I also have this Windsor and Newton gold. I'm playing today, as with most of what I do, is a playtime situation. So I'm just gonna have fun, but I want this to be very loose and lively. And I wanna show you why that style I find particularly therapeutic and fun to do. So I find it's always a good idea to have a ceramic palette to put your colors on. Now, these are concentrated watercolors, so sometimes the pigment sits at the bottom, so I'm shaking them up. The only reason I'm using this today is, first of all, I saw them, <laughs> but also the colors are super vibrant. So that is the tree green. Let's get this moss, I really like the moss too. Um, put some of that, and I'm trying to keep them as far away from each other as possible. And as you see, a little goes a long way. I'm not putting a huge amount on this plate, um, if I need more, I can always get it again. Um, this is the Lucky. And the better you shake it, obviously that wasn't actually a very good shake at all. But the more you shake it, the more pigment's going to come in. Because if it, these have actually been sitting on my shelf for a while, um, which is not ideal, honestly, because what can end up happening is it separates so much that it dries kind of like with little bits. But if you kind of like that, I sometimes actually quite like that look. So, And then this is the Sea Green. And that's quite a nice bright green too. A small brush. Again, any brush will do. I use these all the time. These are my um, Shimoni brushes, but any little brush will do. I'm just going to wet my brush and just see what my colours are. So that's a really beautiful bright green. This is going to be my darker shade. Um, what's this fella? It's like a Oh, what a mossy shade. And then that's the Lucky, which I only feel the need to use because it's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my tape down paper. Um, I like to do something what I call paint with water. So you can pencil on the shape of the clover you want. I want this to be quite loose. What I'm going to do is I'm literally going to paint the design, or like paint, like I'm going to draw on the design, like basically four little heart shapes. 
So I'm using the water itself to kind of guide where the markings are. And it basically looks like little hearts all facing inwards. So like the base of the clover goes in the middle. Now this one's the four leaf. So now I'm going to just take the paint and let's go with Lucky just because it's the one. I'm going to add a bit of water to it and I'm going to drop it into the water that I just put down. You see how magical that is? It just flows up the water. It'll be darker where I put the most concentrated pigment. It's just super relaxing to watch paint flow in water and uh, can drop in some more water because it will fade as it dries. I'm just trying to get that kind of clover like shape. And then with a wet but fairly clean brush, I'm just going to drag a bit of that water down and a completely different color I'm going to drop on to the bottom, let it flow in. See this whole thing when it dries will look completely different, but that's kind of what I love. You don't really know what you're going to get. And I do want to show you that I am putting on quite a layer of water here. Now, again, you never have to use as much water as I do. That's just sort of something that I've, it's kind of become my signature style is to use a lot of water in my painting. I honestly just love the way the paint flows through a really wet, a really wet page. Um, obviously you never really know what you're going to get, which I also kind of love, like for someone who's a control freak like myself, um, it's actually really nice to let loose and not know how something's going to end up. Surprisingly, I actually quite like that. I can't control this. I can sort of hope for control and sort of imagine where the paint colors might spread to, but honestly, it's all bets are off once it's drying. Okay, so as these are dry, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to sprinkle with a flicker of my brush, like so, dropping on some little water droplets, which may not do anything, but it also might make some fun patterns on the already wet leaf shapes. And now I'm going to take that metallic green that I mentioned earlier, the artistic aisle in the little clover, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to splatter on some sprinkles of metallic just to give a little something something sometimes it's really nice just to sit back and watch the paint flow you can also make quite deliberate lines on some around if it's drying it's a different look altogether now, I obviously had no thought process when I went into this. Um, I just wanted to get some clovers on the page. But what's quite nice about this way of painting, this sort of very loose kind of, I guess, experimental way, perhaps, like I'm not really thinking about the end result. I'm just sort of letting it go with the flow. Um, you can get ideas as you do it. Like I didn't think to do like a deliberate outline on any of these, but provided I use the same color palette that I've been using all the way through, most of these things usually work quite well. And remember, it will fade because I've put a heavy amount of water. And so you can just keep layering up if you want. Um, it won't keep quite the richness because, like I said, there's like several layers. But what you get are these fabulous bleed lines sometimes. That's like the goal to get like dif differentiation. That's, I don't know if that's even a word, but... Um, that's what I really love. That's kind of the goal for me. Get this forest on this one as well. I just really love the wet on wet look personally. But then I've also gone with some like more deliberate outline here and here. But as you see, I personally use a lot of water and I just wanted to show you that you can, you know, you can do different things. You'll get different effects. And I strongly recommend everyone sort of try everything to see what you like. Um, Cause it's not for everyone, but I personally Love the very loose kind of watercolour looks. So I'm actually going to open up this gold ink I mentioned earlier. Now I like to use this ink. I mean, there's lots of other options, of course, that you could use. But I personally love this ink for its versatility, but also because it's just, it's so pigmentedly gold. Pigmentedly, that's a word. It's so gold. I'm just going to do one. Again, I wouldn't normally suggest you use your brush for this, guys. It's very damaging. Um, or if you are going to use a brush, use one that you don't mind ruining. I really shouldn't use this one, but I do love it for everything because of the details I can get. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just going to touch on a couple of areas with the gold because, I don't know, why not? <laughs> okay, so this is now dry. As you can see, some of that metallic has spread out as the water's evaporated, which is super cute. I do love when stuff like that happens because you can't plan for that, honestly. You can sort of hope it moves in the way you want it to, but you know, you can never really fully be sure. Now I want to give some details to some of these guys. And so I'm gonna go on with the same color palette that I've been using. But uh, yeah, basically I'm gonna go in and do extra layers and just sort of keep going until I feel like he's ready. Now for the infamous tape peel. I know a lot of people love tape peels. Now provided I stuck this down properly, which it seems like I have, you don't even have to worry about peeling it off. It will just come off nice and neatly. Well, there you go, guys. I kind of wish it was sunny so you could see this metallic shimmer that has been included. I came outside to sort of show you because we are losing the light now, but I just wanted to show you that like, you know, you can just take a s set of colors a lot of water and just sort of play with it see what it does some of them are fabulous and some of this may not i may not love this final piece but i've learned a lot from it like i've learned what will move beautifully what will work and um you know it is it is worth always playing with your paints see what they do um and yeah there we go i hope you enjoyed this little clover tutorial and um yeah let me know in the comments if there's a specific Thing you want to do my focus is mainly on having fun and playing um and this is how i decided to play today happy st patrick's day